In this video, I'm going to show you how to add HTTPS to your domain using a tool called CertBot and its complimentary service, Let's Encrypt. Secure HTTP is an essential service for modern web applications. By forcing connecting web browsers to use an encrypted version of the standard HTTP web protocol, your web application will protect your users' private data, such as passwords and account information, from being intercepted by third parties on the internet. Any hacker who manages to spy on your user's network traffic will only see information scrambled by a highly secure encryption algorithm. HTTPS also helps your users identify that they are on your website and not a malicious website doctored to look like your authentic website. When a web browser recognizes a secure HTTP connection, as verified by your site's CA certificate, it will display a secure connection notification. And now that many major web browsers like Chrome are proactively labeling non-HTTPS websites with warnings that they are insecure, HTTPS may soon be an expected feature for doing business online. For this example, I'm going to make a few assumptions about your web server setup. First, my web server is using Linux Ubuntu version 18.04. The steps I outline here won't work if you're on Heroku or Windows-based system. I also have full admin access. Second, my application is coded in Ruby on Rails, but it's running inside of a Docker container and it's available on the local port 8030. I use the Ruby development tool called Capistrano to upload it to my server. And so that I can serve multiple websites using the same web server, I installed a JavaScript-based web server tool called Nginx. Nginx is directly installed on this system and it's running as a Linux service, but some people also like to install Nginx by Docker and run it through a Docker container. And finally, I'm going to assume that you already have CertBot installed on your system. CertBot is a free tool that's available by the organization Let's Encrypt. We are going to be using Nginx in a setup called Reverse Proxy, and it's going to fulfill three main functions. First, it's going to redirect all of our regular HTTP traffic on port 80 to the secure HTTPS on port 443. This will force our users onto the encryption version of HTTP. Second, it's going to invoke our HTTPS certificate that's installed on the server to encrypt all of our connections. And third, it's going to route web traffic to the appropriate Docker container based on the website's domain name that's being called. And this is going to allow us to run multiple websites on different domains on the same system. The web server that I'll be using for demonstration purposes is running another application I created called USTreasuryYieldCurve.com, an app for exploring the yield curve in finance. Currently all the web requests going to that particular domain name are routed to a Docker container running a Ruby on Rails app with the application. For our example, we're going to create a subdomain with its own HTTPS certificate and that's going to go to another Docker container running an example website application. This is the settings page for my domain name, USTreasuryYieldCurve.com. Now the first step that I'm going to do is create an A record which will make the subdomain NGINXDEMO.USTreasuryYieldCurve.com. Now if you point your web browser to the URL that I just created, you'll find the 404 not found page generated by NGINX. That's because NGINX doesn't know how to properly route the nginxdemo.ustreasuryyieldcurve.com domain yet. We have to create it in the NGINX settings. But first, let's create a Docker container running a simple application that will display a web page that I could point to. So here I am logged into the server that's running ustreasuryyieldcurve.com and I'm going to show you the Docker containers that are running that application. Now what I'm going to do is create another container which has like a little demo page that's going to uh, run on port 8010 locally and that is going to have uh, that's going to have the new application that we're going to route the subdomain to. And we could test it out by going to localhost 8010. So as you can see it pulls some HTML we can't really load this HTML through web browser because the Linux firewall prevents us from remotely connecting, but we could use the curl utility to test out the port 
from the local system. Now, an important thing about Nginx is that it has two important folders that have the configurations for different websites that's hosting. That's under ECT, Nginx, and Sites, and there's going to be a Sites Available and a Sites Enabled. The Sites Available folder is a repository for all of the sites that you're proxying through Nginx, but the Sites Enabled contains symlinks to all those. What I want to do now is add a settings file that will point port 80 to the new subdomain. But first, let's create our certificate using certbot. So when we run our certbot command, what it's going to do is it's going to use Nginx to complete what's called a challenge, where it's going to make a URL available, and then it'll contact the Let's Encrypt server. Let's Encrypt is a certificate authority and they are going to be issuing us our HTTPS certificate. So it's going to contact their server and their server is going to check whether it could reach that URL and that's going to be the verification to show that we are controlling our own server and that our server points to that particular domain name. Okay, so here now I'm going to run the command by certbot. And now the HTTPS certificate is installed. So now let's create a configuration to point that website to our running Docker container. And so this configuration is largely copied from the main website. And as you can see, um, we have two servers set up. There's one for 443, which includes the Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. And there's another server listener on port 80 that's going to redirect any regular HTTP traffic to the encrypted version of it. And I'm pointing it to localhost port 8010, which is running our little demo application. Okay, so the next step that we're going to have to do is create the sim link inside of the site's enabled folder. Okay, so the sim link now exists. So now what we're going to do is test our Nginx settings to make sure that it's all right. And it tells us that the Nginx test was successful. And I'm going to just restart Nginx. Now if we try going to the URL, it's going to work it's going to take our HTTP request, forward it to the secure version, and we should be able to see the demo site. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please leave a like or a comment, and I'm thinking about making more videos like this. See you next time.